it's nice to be at crossroads. You see, you see a lot more people passing when you are at the at the crossing. And and so you can benefit from that, and you can keep contribute to that as well. I, I really see myself at the crossroads of science and engineering, of trying to work on problems that are uh, relevant from an application point of view, as well as always keep in mind this this underlying drive for 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 discovery. In my lab, we focus on understanding the mechanics of thin structures. A thin structure is uh, any object that has one dimension that is much smaller than, than any other. One example might be uh, hair, so it has a diameter that is much smaller than the length. We might be talking about a sheet of paper, we might be talking about pavement, we might be talking about the dome. One feature of thin structures is that when you put them under loading, uh, they can undergo large deformations, they can undergo what we call mechanical instabilities. Buckling is another uh, word that we typically associate with these type of systems. In, in the past, one would want to study the onset of these large deformations in order to avoid them, because if we do get there, then the structure would be broken, would be kaput. Recent advancement of new materials where we can get into these large deformation modes and come back reversibly and back again, is really opening up new avenues for functionality and once these new opportunities are there we need to understand what happens which is what we're trying to do here in the group there's no error on the max of the range uh -huh. when i came to mit i actually first joined the applied math department at the time as an instructor and eventually i uh, accepted this appointment as an assistant professor here in mechanical engineering and civil and environmental engineering there's a lot more free room when you are right at the interface because you can merge things from one field onto another one and really create something new. And, uh, and so there's more of opportunity for discovery, more opportunity for growth, more opportunity for, for, for novelty. A unique feature of the structures is that the uh, deformation processes are strongly rooted in geometry and as such they are very scalable. And the advantage of the scalability feature of these type of systems is that we can then do experiments at the scale that is first comfortable and we can then get precision data um, which can help us inform in the generation of models and once we have the models in place we can take them back up or down to the original scale of the uh, application that motivated the study. An example of a system at a very large scale that we're currently working on and that we've been able to scale down onto the desktop here in the lab is the servicing of horizontal well bores. These are extremely long holes essentially and when they get serviced we go down with a very long steel piping and uh, when inserted loads can develop and the structures can buckle. They can undergo large deformations which lead to lockup and eventually jamming. And so what we're trying to do is to fundamentally understand why this jamming occurs to then increase reach and to be able to go further. In contrast, at the very small scale is the locomotion of bacteria. Some types of bacteria, there's a helical flagella, and we're trying to understand how the geometric and material properties of this flagella impact locomotion properties. On the other hand, one might say, well, we can just do it inside the computer, true, but there's nothing like really playing with the systems touching the experiments, um, looking at what happens, exploring. And so we follow very much hand-in-hand -hand computer models with experimentation, but the surprises typically really happen in the lab. When you play with things, you can discover things. There's always a surprise around the corner. It's, it's what we're here for. 